I now want to explain how to find the slope of a parameterized curve, x equals f of t, y equals g of t, at some time t. So here's the heuristic. So we know from single variable calculus that the slope is dy dx. And let's just imagine dividing the top and bottom of this fraction by dt. So we get dy dt over dx dt. And since y is g of t and x equals f of t, I can write this as g prime of t over f prime of t. Now in general, you have to be careful. You can't just treat dt as if it were a number. And we'll see that when we get to multivariable calculus, if you do stuff like this, you'll get nonsense. However, in this single variable case, it actually gives you the right answer. So the slope is equal to g prime of t over f prime of t. I'll give a more rigorous explanation of this in a minute. Note that this expression only makes sense if f prime of t equals zero, is not equal to zero. So if f prime of t equals zero, what does this mean? Well, it means that the rate of change of x at time t is zero. So we are only moving in the y direction, if we're moving at all. So that tells us that the slope should be infinite, the tangent line should be vertical. And that's true if g prime is not equal to zero. So if f prime of t equals zero, and g prime of t is not equal to zero, then the slope is infinite. The tangent line to the curve is vertical. If f prime of t and g prime of t are both zero, then we actually don't know anything. It's possible that the curve doesn't have a well-defined slope at this point, or it might have a well-defined slope, but we just can't figure it out this way. For example, you could have some curve where you're just moving along a straight line, and then you stop for a while, and then both f prime and g prime are zero, and then you keep going. So at that time when you're stopping and resting, f prime and g prime will be zero, but the slope will still be defined. Anyway, here's a more precise way of justifying this formula. So, so the justification is that if f prime of t is not zero, then at least locally, the curve is a graph y equals h of x for some function h. So here's the picture. So where we're actually going in the curve is on this curve y equals h of x. So here's the point x of t comma y of t. Now the whole curve might not be a graph, but at least for t close to this particular t that we're interested in, it's going to be a graph, because it's always going to be moving to the right. Um, so we can now use the chain rule. So I look at the equation y equals h of x. And since y is equal to g of t and x is equal to f of t, I can plug those in to write this as g of t equals h of f of t. And now I can use the chain rule. So I have g prime of t is dh dx, so h is a function of x, times f prime of t. That's what the chain rule tells us. Um, and I can also think of h as being y. So this this dh dx over here, this is the slope. It's the slope of the graph, so it's the slope of the tangent line to the graph at this point. And so I can solve this equation by dividing both sides by f prime of t to get that the slope 
equals g prime of t over f prime of t. Okay, let's do an example where I can use the slope to help sketch a parameterized curve. So my example will be to sketch the curve x equals cosine t, y equals sine t times cosine t, and t goes from 0 to 2 pi. So let's make some room over here to sketch it. Now, we'll notice that this curve hits the origin when cosine t equals 0. So this hits the origin when cosine of t equals 0. That is to say, when t equals pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So this curve is going through the origin twice. And we can say, what is the slope when it hits the origin? Well, let's cal calculate the slope. So the slope is dy dt divided by dx dt. So dy dt, so the derivative of sine t gives me a cosine squared t. And the derivative of cosine t gives me a minus sine t. So cosine squared t minus sine squared t. And then dx dt is minus sine t. So let's plug in some values. So at t equals pi over 2, what's the slope? Well, cosine is 0 and sine is 1. So I have 0 minus 1 over minus 1, which is 1. So let's draw that, that line here. So here's a line of slope 1 through the origin. This is the tangent line when t equals pi over 2. Now at t equals 3 pi over 2, what's the slope? Well, now cosine is still 0 and sine is minus 1. So this is 0 minus 1 over minus minus 1, which is now minus 1. So let's draw a, a line of slope minus 1 through the origins. That will look like this. So that's the tangent line to the curve when t equals 3 pi over 2. Now let's understand a couple more points. How about t equals 0? So at t equals 0, so what's the point x, y? Well, x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0. So we're over here at t equals 0. And what's the slope? Well, the slope is, um, if I plug this in, so cosine is 1 and sine is 0, so I get infinity. Okay. So the tangent line to the curve is vertical at this point. And at t equals pi, x, y equals what? So now cosine is minus 1 and sine is 0, so we get minus 1, 0. And the slope is again infinite because sine is 0 and cosine is 1. Or cosine is minus 1. Okay, so here we are at time t equals pi, and again the tangent line is vertical. So now, using those points, I can sketch the curve by just connecting the dots like this. So this is t equals 0, this is t equals pi, and here at the origin this is where t equals pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Now which way is the arrow going to go? Well, it should go from t equals 0 to t equals pi over 2 first, and at t equals pi over 2, remember the slope is 1, so the arrow should go like this, and then it continues to t equals pi, and then continues to t equals 3 pi over 2 where the slope is minus 1, and then it goes back to t equals 0. Now, if we want to double check those arrows, another way we can do this is that, so at t equals 0, for example, we know that x prime of t 
is minus sine t, which is zero, and y prime of t equals cosine squared minus sine squared t, which is one. So this tells us that the arrow at t equals zero is going up. And at t equals pi, well, x prime is sine minus sine t, which again is zero. And what's y prime of t? Well, it's, it's, um, it's, uh, it's again, it's equal to one. So again, the arrow is up at time t equals pi. You could also calculate the arrows at some other points. Um, so the more, the more sample points and slopes you calculate, the more of a detailed picture you're going to get of your curve.